we were discussing uh, ways of uh, biasing our transistor using a current source. And uh, when, where we left off was, we said that let's take a transistor and we can assume mu and C ox W by L to be equal to two milliamp per volt square. And uh, I would like to ensure that, I would like to ensure that whatever current that is flowing in from top, let's assume one milliamps, I mean, this, since this is an ideal current source and this current has nowhere to go, but into the drain of the MOSFET, it will go into the drain of the MOSFET, but while it goes into the drain of the MOSFET, I would uh, also like to ensure that the MOSFET stays in saturation. So, uh, so how, how do we go about doing it, right? So before going there, let, let me ask you this question. Let's assume that I have a current source here, one milliamp. Let's assume I have another current source. Let's say this is 1.1 milliamp. Okay. And I connect them in series. Right. And I observe this voltage. Now, I understand that this might be a problematic scenario to, uh, to comment on what's going to happen. So, for that, let's assume that there is a small capacitance associated with this node. Okay. Now, can you comment what is going to happen to this node V naught? Yeah. So essentially, you will you will be drawing out current of one of zero point one milliamp from from the capacitor. So, uh, and what is going to happen to this voltage? This voltage will. What will the profile of this voltage look like? Yeah, so whatever it was initially, it will keep on decreasing linearly. Okay, so what is the root cause here? The root cause here is, is uh, the reason it's decreasing is because you uh, at, at the node V naught, you are pushing in some current and you are pulling out more current than you are pushing in, right? So in order to balance, this capacitor has to provide, uh, uh, has to provide some, uh, that, that difference current. Now, uh, what happens at steady state, that is at time t equal to infinity, we not ideally in this case will go to minus infinity, right? Because we assume this to be ideal current sources and, and, and so on. Now, now let me, uh, now let's assume that the, the bottom current source is not, a, is not a fixed current source, it's a variable current source, okay? And when, when I say it's a variable current source, which means there is a knob which you can tune. So let's say there is a knob here, which you can tune. Somehow it's connected. Okay. Now I give you the job of telling you balance those two currents coming from, uh, I mean, this, uh, balance the current in the bottom current source such that it becomes exactly equal to 1 milliamps. So, what will be the algorithm that you will proceed with? Let's say you are in lab and you are given this task. You can observe voltages and you want to balance the, both the currents, what will you do? Pardon? Uh, not necessarily get voltage to zero uh, because we don't know what V0 actually is. The value of V0 actually we don't know, right? It's too... Right, right. So, so essentially even what I will do is I will observe V0 and see whether it is increasing or whether it is decreasing with time. If it is decreasing, I am getting a piece of information. What information am I getting if V0 is decreasing? Pardon? Let's assume that I am, okay, so say this is a black box, okay? And there are two friends who are doing this experiment. One is in charge of observing V0 and other is in charge of tweaking this current, this knob. Right, so the I mean the guy who is in charge of observing V naught observes that V naught is decreasing. What information will he feed back to the friend who is tweaking the current, which is tweaking the current source? You have to decrease this, right? I mean the observation is V naught is decreasing means that the the current source at the bottom is stronger, right? How strong is a matter of detail, but it's stronger. Right? Do you agree? So, which means that 
you will convey the information hey that looks like the bottom current source is stronger you have to weaken the bottom current source so then you will turn the knob you will turn the knob and in the knob will be turned in such a way that the current source decreases and if the alternate happens right if the alternate happens if, if v not increases right what information will uh, will be passed through the bottom current source is is stronger right so if 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 sorry yeah bottom current source is weaker you are right so if v not is increasing if v not is increasing then clearly the top current source is stronger alternatively the bottom current source is weaker so i have to make the bottom current source stronger right so maybe uh, this guy will take some action to to make the bottom current source stronger and this interplay will go on till till when till the slope till the slope becomes constant till v not doesn't change right slope zero is not necessary sorry yeah, slope should be zero right yeah v not should be constant yeah correct so uh, so now uh, note that this is clearly similar to our case with mosfets because of what is our mosfet if say it's a current source a mosfet in bias and saturation is a current source it's also a controlled current source the control knob is vgs right so do the same experiment do the same hypothetical experiment you are you are observing the drain voltage vd and you have to take some action between vgs and you observe that again assume there is some small capacitor you need not assume the existence of the capacitor but it helps in the thought process uh, so now you you observe that vd is going down what should you do to vgs let's say assume that you you stuck in a voltage yeah so let's assume that you have come to the lab and you have connected a variable voltage source between gate and source and you are observing the drain voltage with the objective of ensuring that the bottom current source the bottom transistor also behaves like a current source while sinking in 1 million but you just stuck in a voltage vgs you don't know whether it is accurate or not and you are observing vd you are observing vd with the hope of weakening the vgs in such a way that the transistor remains in saturation okay so now when vd decreases what is the conclusion right when vd decreases clearly I, I, the conclusion is the bottom current source that is the transistor is probably stronger than necessary i have to make it weaker how do i make a transistor weaker by decreasing vgs right uh, i decrease so which means that if vd if vd decreases the algorithm is decrease vgs in this case source is fixed so decrease vg yes correct so so essentially these two are equivalent in the argument that i am making okay so so if vd decreases you decrease vg alternatively if vd increases you have to increase vg this is to balance out the currents right this is to for current balancing while keeping mosfet in saturation and why am i saying that while keeping mosfet in saturation it's because if if we uh, there is for a fixed value of vgs right for a fixed value of vgs under the condition of saturation this current is fixed right so if let's say vgs is equal to 3 milliamp sorry 3 3 volt okay and threshold voltage is 1 volt we saw that this current if the transistor is is in saturation this current will be 4 milliamps this this transistor is trying to pull out 4 milliamps but the bottom, top current source cannot provide 4 milliamps so so how do you eventually balance it out so if the top current source is saying that i can only give you 1 milliamp 
But the bottom current source is saying that I want 4 milliamps, which means something has to give. Something has to break. So what will break? The transistor will break. By break, I think I don't mean that it will, yeah, it, 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 will, it will cause fire or anything. So essentially, it will go into linear region because the current in the linear region is smaller than the current in the saturation region. So in order to support this 1 milliamp, in order to support this 1 milliamp, you, if you don't change DGS, the current, the transistor will go into linear. Yes. Okay. No, it's not a for, okay. It's a forbidden situation under the condition that uh, if if you set up VGA to mean something which is such that you're getting a value distance from one milliamp. Right. Then would logically be a little bit forbidden. It's okay. It's when you say forbidden, what do you mean? It means it, that condition. Even in this current source situation. Right. Imagine X is not equal to one milliamp. Right. Yeah? And it's kind of an indeterminate situation. Yes, it is. It is indeterminate. Mathematically, indeterminism means what in this case? That operating VGA is not valid anymore. It cannot stay in that operating region where I am trying to balance 1 milliamp with 4 milliamps. That's not going to happen. So operating region has to change. So where can it go? What are the two operating regions in this case? If it's not in saturation, it has to go into linear. Because in linear region, I can support this. Because in a linear region, the current is affected by the drain to source voltage. Right? In a linear region, the current through a transistor can be changed by changing the drain to source voltage. And that's how, and that's how this is getting balanced. Right? So, so, so if you look at the current equation in, in saturation, so this IDS in saturation, so this is proportional to PGS minus threshold voltage whole square, and IDS in linear is proportional to. So, which means is the other way of saying the same thing is this is independent of VDS. Okay. So, which means that VDS going up and down wouldn't change the ID set, right? Or IDS at saturation. However, here this is dependent on. VDS, which means that if VDS changes and I need to balance out the current, then the only, only region of operation that is possible is linear region. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? So this is extremely crucial because half of analog circuit is based on this, that you cannot drive one current source with another. And if it happens, then you have to tweak something. OK, yes. Okay. Uh, uh, you mean the okay. So so if VD, uh, so what is the objective of observing VD and taking action? So I, I am the objective is I am not able to figure. Out, so essentially, I am not able to uh, figure out whether the transistor is in saturation or linear condition by looking at anything else. I have to look at the voltage, right? So let's assume that I am looking at the voltage VD. And I, I am since I'm applying VG, I also know the voltage of VG, right? So looking at these two, uh, th these two voltages, how do I figure, right? How do I figure what to do, right? So if VD is decreasing, right? If VD is decreasing, what is the conclusion? It is moving towards the linear region, right? So I don't want that. So if it's moving towards the linear region, I don't want that. What should I do? I have to decrease the VG, right? And if it's going the other way around, if VD is increasing, which means I know that it's, it's in saturation, but the transistor is not well balanced in the sense that the uh, my MOSFET is weaker than whatever it needs to be. If VD is increasing, let's say VD is increasing, which means that I am pulling out less current that I am pushing in into that node, right? If I push in more current than I pull out, that voltage will increase. So let's assume that you have a node, right? Yeah, you have a current source. 
and you are observing this node. You have a current source I1, you have a current source I2. You are observing this node. If I1 is more than I2, this node voltage will increase. If I1 is less than I2, or rather, if I2 is low, uh, I1 is less than I2, this node voltage will decrease. Right? So essentially, if you have to balance out voltages, you have to push in and pull out equal amount of current. Right? So, you know, so a proxy for figuring out whether I am doing that is to observe that voltage. Right? That's what I am doing. So I am observing this voltage VD and trying to conclude whether two currents are getting balanced or not. Yes. Not this, okay, so that's why I put the capacitor to help the thought process. So basically, the extra charge is accumulated from the capacitor, if there's extra positive charge. Yeah. And extra negative charge just means that you've taken out too much positive charge from the capacitor. Right. Right. So, see, in, in any node will have a capacitor associated with it. I mean, not have a node without a without a capacitor. However small it might be, there will be a capacitor associated with it. Right. So when we say that uh, your KCI is valid at all instances of time, right? If I don't put the capacitor, then the thought process is what is happening at KCI. Right. So if I disregard capacitor, which means that even if the capacitor is there, I am not bothered about how it affected. Which means I am naturally saying that I am observing as KCI. Right, which means that it has gone to infinity. Now, infinity is is not a very easy uh, thing to wrap our heads around. So, so just put a capacitor and observe what's going on. Right. Great question. Right. So his 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 uh, his uh, comment is, hey, why don't I why why should I bother with all this? Just put. If, v, if uh, VGS is 3 volt, just put VD equal to mo anything more than 2 volt, right? So, so his, his comment is this. Yeah, so this makes sense, right? If this is 3 volt and I put another battery here, let's say of 3 volt, I don't have to bother. Always in saturation, right? 2.5 volt, always in saturation, right? So what is the problem? This will be saturation, guaranteed. But is it a use, use, useful circuit? Not that I need to make an amplifier. Which means that I have to push some incremental current into some RL. Correct? So if I change now, let's assume I change VGS. Somehow I have changed VGS incrementally. Just take the capacitor as it is and move it and back to the constant. Okay, good. So, so now, the comment is if I put a just leave the capacitor as is, right? So, what will be the voltage of the capacitor? Why should it get to set to saturation region? Because first it will be linear as the voltage is zero, and then gradually the current will enter the capacitor to charge. So, that's what I'm asking. Why? What makes, I mean, why is it necessary that the current has to enter the capacitor? What makes I mean, what can I mean? It's 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 not a God-given right that transistor has to be in saturation, right? It it it, it can be whatever region it balance it, it it is required to balance out the currents. So under if you just hook up uh, a circuit like this, why do you think that the capacitor will get charged to the linear uh, saturation region? Or in other words, why should you think VD will get charged to uh, more than two volts? Okay, so which means that, okay, so then you are saying I'm not starting from three volt at VGS, I'm starting from zero volt at VGS. You are implying that, right? So if we start from, let's say, zero volt VGS, right? If you start from zero volt VGS, this current is zero. This is one milliamp. This will go into the capacitor, no issues, which means this capacitor voltage will start rising, right? But note that one milliamp is going to the capacitor, not into the transistor. 
I want the transistor to sink in one million when and things are balanced. So I say the current has a current greater than the saturation We'll come to that. We'll go to that, right? So now, so do you do you agree with the fact that if I start with zero volt, uh, uh, this this capacitor voltage will keep rising, and if I keep it at zero volt, this capacitor voltage will keep rising till infinity, right? This is not helpful. So what should I do? I I'll increase. I see that I see that drain voltage is increasing, which means the conclusion back in the back of my mind is my current source transistor is weaker. So I'll make the transistor stronger. How do I make the transistor stronger by increasing VGS? So I increase VGS, which means this current is starting to increase from zero. Maybe it became 0.1 milliamp, right? But still 0.9 milliamp is flowing into the capacitor. Still the voltage is increasing. So I keep doing that. I keep doing that till this probably goes to two volt. Then it goes to two volt. Then I see this becomes one milliamp. Then no more current is flowing into the capacitor. It's balanced. Now let's say I further increase. I'm experimenting in the lab. I can do whatever I want. I increase. I made it 2.1 volt. Right. So now if the transistor, now the condition, the question is, will the transistor remain in saturation now? So yes, it will. But what is the thought process? Why will it enter? Correct. So so it will get dissipated. But the, but it note that if the transistor were to be in saturation region, the amount of current that it would have sunk in would have been independent of VDS. Correct. It would have been independent of VDS, which means this current would have been greater than one million. And this current wouldn't have been affected by the voltage between drain and source, which means that this voltage would have been decreasing, but this current should have been equal to one more than one million. And that is not a sustainable condition because if this voltage decreases, the transistor goes into linear. Correct? So that this voltage will start decreasing, the transistor will go into linear, and then the current will decrease to balance out both the currents. Okay, so the last part is this. So let's assume that the transistor is in uh, is in saturation even if I increase the battery voltage to more than two volt. Let's assume that. If we assume that, which means that this current is more than one milliamp, right? So let's assume this is one point two milliamp. I don't know whether this is right or not. Do your calculations, but let's assume this is one point two milliamps. Uh, so if this is one point two milliamps, what is happening to the capacitor? The capacitor voltage is decreasing, right? Right. If capacitor voltage decreases, then obviously my transistor no, is cannot be in saturation because if I wait for long enough time, this capacitor voltage will decrease, 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 and it will go below 1.1 volt. So this this voltage will decrease from whatever value it was, and this is 1.1 volt. And the moment I drop below 1.1 volt, this drain is one bt lower then gate, the transistor enters linear. So what happens when transistors enters linear? Why will, why does current get balanced when the transistor enters linear? Right, because VDS is decreasing and the, now the linear region current is a function of drain to source voltage, right? The saturation region current was not a function of drain to source voltage. And it is because it was not a function of drain to source voltage, it was behaving like an ideal current source, right? If the what is the definition of a current source? It the current is independent of the voltages across its terminals, right? The transistor behaves as a current source in saturation because the current is independent of the current between the terminals, which is drain to source. But that condition is not satisfied, satisfiable under the condition that I have drawn here, which means it has to come out of this current source mode. When it comes out of its current source mode, it goes into linear region. And now you can affect the current through the transistor using the drain to source voltage, right? In a very crude sense, you can assume that the transistor now has become a resistance, right? So, 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 I mean, for example, if I neglect this term, the relationship between VDS and IDS is that of a resistor. It's a linear relationship, right? So essentially your transistor in a very crude sense, a linear region is, is this. And this can always be balanced. No issue with balancing. It's not a, I am not fighting to current sources, right? 
So when you are trying to balance your transistor using current source, when you're trying to bias your transistors using independent current source, you have to avoid the condition that two current sources are fighting each other independently. This is similar to if, I mean, you're going into uh, uh, offices after graduating from here, if you have two bosses and both of you ask you to do different things, then you don't know what to do, right? So here, the two bosses are, one is VGS, another is ID. VGS is asking for some other current, ID is asking for, uh, is, is, ask, is telling a transistor, I, I can only supply this. Now the transistor doesn't know what to do, it says I'll go into linear, right? So essentially, if you have two chains of command, they have to talk to each other. It means these two have to be talking to each other. In pure, I mean, in, in a very, very simple English, these two have to be talk, talking to each other, which means that there has to be some way of feeding that information that from output to input, which means you need feedback, right? Without feedback, you'll not be able to bias. If you have to, if you are, if you are, this is not only true for, again, for transistor, for, a, <coughs> for any network, when you are observing an output and you are taking an action based on input or taking an action to change the input, which means intuitively you are invoking feedback. Okay, so now uh, are you satisfied till now? Is it clear? So, like any VGS above, uh, saturation VGS for one milliamp is uh, I, did not, I didn't understand the question. Can you repeat? Example. Will it be fine? Uh, that's the question. I mean, will, I mean, current will eventually balance off, but will the transistor remain in saturation? It's not any, uh, but, uh, it, will it will balance. It will always balance, right? It will always balance. But the thing is that, again, I have assumed that the top current source is ideal, but eventually you see that that current source is also made out of some MOSFET. So, so, so this, this voltage, if this voltage keeps on increasing, that current source will get crushed and the current coming from that independent current source will reduce. So something has to give, right? So, so you have to eventually balance it uh, while keeping things in saturation, because if you don't keep in saturation, your gain reduces, right? So ultimately we are trying to uh, make an amplifier. So we need to ensure that things are in saturation. Okay. Okay, fine. So now, uh, now that we have, an understanding of what are we trying to do. So what is the simplest way of ensuring my transistor is in saturation while doing this? Now we agree that these two voltages have to talk to each other, right? VD and VG cannot be said independently. They have to talk. So which means that, <laughs> what is the conclusion that we drew? If VD is increasing, I have to increase VG, right? If VD is increasing, the transistor is weaker, I have to, make it stronger, I can make it stronger by increasing VG. If VG is decreasing, the transistor is stronger than necessary. I have to make it weaker, I can make it weaker by reducing VG. So what is the simplest thing that you can think of? Right? Okay, so the logic for that was, <laughs> his question is, uh, what is the logic that when we said that VG increased above the critical value, the transistor went into li linear? The logic was, if, if uh, yeah, it, it's proved by contradiction, right? So you assume that the transistor is in saturation, even if I go above two, two volts, which means that the current will be more than one million, right? Now I'm pulling out more current than I'm pushing in, which means the capacitor will go down. And since this is a constant current, this 1.2 milliamp will not, in this case, the 1.2 milliamp wouldn't have changed because it's not dependent on VDS. Eventually the transistor has to go into linear then because my drain voltage is plummeting. So this falling current eventually has to go into linear. Yes. Right. If it doesn't, if it still remains in saturation, which means that it will go to minus infinity. Yes. It's like a normal, device. Correct. Uh, and you can also imagine that it's almost like a resistor, okay. right? Almost like a resistor. And there is no bad problem when you are I'm pushing, pushing a current source into a resistor. That is always fine. I mean, whatever fine means in that case. Okay, fine. So, <laughs> so, uh, so if you agree that this is one of, I mean, I mean, this is by intuition, we, we derived this, right? This is one of the possible solution, but again, 
when you synthesize something, you have to go back and analyze and see whether this is indeed the case, right? Sometimes intuition can lead you to uh, uh, different uh, uh, different conclusions. So, so what do you think? Will this be? Will this condition be? Uh, if if I connect it up like this, will the transistor be in saturation? It has to be because now my VDS is equal to VGS which is naturally greater than VGS minus VG. So the transistor will always be in saturation, okay? So, so in other way, other way of, by the way, now can you tell me under this condition, which is, uh, which is the dependent variable, which is the independent variable, the way I have set up the transistor in terms of ID and VGS. Dependent variable is VGS because I am applying ID. I am applying ID. I am set and and I am hoping that the ID is setting up the magic voltage of VGS, right? I am not doing anything, right? The negative feedback is is setting up the voltage whatever it's necessary. Okay, so 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 in other words, the other way of saying the same thing is I know that I mean IDS is. which means that my VGS, I can write as threshold voltage plus under root Basically, I rewrote the equation. And in this case, your IDS is your independent variable and VGS is getting set corresponding to the value of ID, right? So now what happens, let's say, I mean, from suddenly from one milliamp, I say that I'll increase the current from one milliamp to 1.1 milliamp. So I go from 1.1 milliamp. Will the transistor still remain in saturation? It will. And what, what changes in the device will happen to ensure that the transistor in saturation, the VGS will increase, right? So if IDS naturally, I mean, from this equation, you can easily see that if IDS is increasing, then VGS is also increasing. Correct? Again, you don't have to do anything. It will auto-correct, right? So sometimes what happens is, uh, I didn't mention this earlier, but threshold voltage, nu n, these are all device parameters, which are also functions of temperature. You change temperature, these changes, right? So if I, so now let's assume that your threshold voltage changed, right? Let's say your threshold voltage from one volt, so, so in this case, let's say IDS was uh, one milliamp and threshold voltage was one volt. So your VGS was two volt. Two volt was getting balanced by one volt plus under root, whatever. And this was supposed to be one volt. This is how it was getting balanced. But let's say IDS increased from one milliamp to 1.1 milliamp. Oh, sorry, uh, sorry, uh, I take my word back. <laughs> Uh, let's assume that threshold voltage changed from one volt to 0.9 volt, right? So let's say PTH changed from one volt to 0 0.9 volt. What will happen to this circuit? VGS will change, right? VGS will automatically adjust itself, correct? Note that, note that if I if I go back to this type of biasing, if I go back to this type of biasing and let's assume that you have somehow figured out a way of uh, balancing the current by setting two volt at, at, uh, at the gate and, uh, and, you, uh, and, uh, and you ensure that the drain voltage is not changing, right? You tweak, 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 and you set it up like that, right? So what I'm trying to get at here is that if you are, if you are in the lab, this is something you can actually do. You, you spend half a day and you ensure that you got exactly the magic voltage here so that this voltage doesn't change. And this is one milliamp. This voltage will be steady. Whatever the steady might be, this voltage will be steady. Okay. So now you saw that somebody turned on the AC, temperature changed, right? If the temperature changed, mu n change, let's say mu n increased, which means that this current has to increase from one to 1.01 milliamps. 
what will happen the transistor goes up, goes out of saturation right by just turning on the ac but what happens here right so it, it, it the the vgs adjusts itself the vgs adjusts itself in order to ensure that that we we always stay in in saturation right so in this case your vgs will increase or decrease if vth decreases decrease vgs will auto decrease right it will adjust itself okay make sense okay great any questions on anything that we have talked about this is always direct like yes this is always true in this case in this particular architecture i didn't understand ah okay so that that is the key thing right the expression is always true but will that expression is true if it is in saturation will it be in saturation that is the job of a designer to ensure could be connected like this we are ensuring yes Always... Correct. Exactly. Exactly. If 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 you connect it like this, so his question was, hey, this 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 expression is always true, right? This expression is always true, but this expression is always true only when it's in saturation. But who ensures it's in saturation? The architecture you have to set it up in such a way that it is always in saturation, right? If you if you if you set it up like this it will probably be in saturation for one magic voltage if something changes the transistor goes off then you cannot use that condition that it is again in saturation okay so if you set it up like this then the transistor is in saturation always then obviously you can use that that equation all the time so that is as far as the way of a mathematical way of thinking is concerned a designer way of thinking is in this case i have made the dependent current source dependent on the voltage of vds voltage between vds right so so essentially while keeping the transistor in saturation i have been able to ensure that uh, exact current whatever current i am willing to feed in gets pulled in by the transistor even if the ambient conditions changes right even if temperature changes even if mu n changes even if i decide to change the design and change w by l right so whatever i do your, your transistor will always remain in saturation okay so there is a name for this particular configuration so when you connect this drain to gate uh, this is a i mean extremely useful configuration is used uh, almost everywhere so if you connect drain to gate and you have to, maybe you whatever you connect here it doesn't matter so this this configuration is called diode connected configuration called diode connected and the reason we call it diode connected is because uh, if you this is now i mean between the drain and source this is a two terminal device or three terminal device it's a two terminal device because drain and gate are shorted to each other so so it's essentially a two terminal device and if you if you apply let's say you add, add a battery here right you apply a battery here and you sweep the battery voltage okay uh let's say uh, whatever it is and i observe uh, let's let's say this is vdd okay so i sweep the battery voltage from uh this is this is diode connection which is analogous to the diode which passes to the terminal correct right in diode your exponent is yeah yeah it's basically that but its graph is pretty similar with respect to even if it's a three terminal device but its graph is similar with a two terminal device that's why this configuration is called diode connected right so if i if i sweep this battery in this voltage and and i say that uh i am observe okay let me let me write in terms of vd vds let's say let's say vds right forget about this forget about this this one so if i plot id versus vds in this case what would it look like it will be till 1 volt this is zero after that saturation region 
uh, expression, uh, saturation region plot. And this, as you pointed out, looks really similar to your a diode voltage characteristics, right? As it turns out, the, this, this name of diode connection came because instead of MOSFETs, people used to use, we used to use um, BJTs earlier. And BJTs, as you know, is two back-to-back -back diodes connected. And, and in that case, uh, the graph goes like much steeper, exponential. But even though it's not exponential in case of a MOSFET, the name stuck and we still call it uh, a diode connector. It's a two-terminal device, which has this uh, IDVD ID configuration. Okay, fine. <laughs> that is as far as the jargon is concerned. So uh, now uh, I would like to draw your attention to another thing. Now, a MOSFET is a three terminal device as we know it. And the current IDS, so I, I, essentially I'm trying to take a current I naught and I'm trying to push this current I naught into the MOSFET and try, while trying to bias it properly, right? So this, how many ways I can connect this I naught? Can I, I can connect the I naught into the drain. I can connect the I naught into the source, right? So I, I could have as well done this, correct? And how many ways can I change my control knob? I can change VG or I can change VS. Right? My control knobs are both gate and source independently. We have been grounding source. That's why that, that knob went away. But in principle, my current is dependent on, dependent on VG minus VS. Correct? So, so essentially, there are... So we can feed current into drain or source, or we can... We can take corrective action for color for balancing by changing gate or source. Right? Does that make sense? Right? There are two ways of feeding current and two ways of adjusting current. So I can observe. So how many ways? Uh, what are the permutation combination? How, how many ways can I come up with architecture so as to balance current? I can feed into drain, observe at gate. I can feed into drain, observe at source. I can feed into source, observe at gate. I can feed into source and observe at source. There are four different ways of balancing current through a MOSFET. Yeah, so, 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 okay, so let me approach it in a slightly different way. So what did we do essentially here? Here, in this case, we, <coughs> we observed the drain voltage and took a corrective action at the gate, right? So we're observing a drain and tweaking at gate, right? But it's not, it's, it's not necessary that we have to stick to this configuration. I could as well observe the source and tweak the gate. I, I, can have, I can connect the current source at the source, right? I could have current that connected the current source here. And I could have observed the gate, right? So we'll see how to do it, right? We'll see how to do it. But even before doing it, we'll, I mean, you should be able to appreciate that there are, in general, there should be four different ways of biasing. Is that part, part clear? There are four different ways of biasing. Yes. Yes, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. How we'll get to that? How it depends. You'll see. But even before going, I mean, the way we will do it is different. Obviously, you cannot do the same thing over and over again. But uh, even before going there, uh, uh, do you agree that there can be four possible four possible solutions? Whether all four possible solutions are valid or not, that's up for analysis. You have to go and check. Right? But otherwise, there are two places where I can feed current, two places where I can change voltages. Right? So, which means that there should be four ways of biasing using current, constant current sources. You had a question? It, no, okay. It will be different from the earlier. We'll get to that. We'll get to the details of the architectures. Let, hold on for a, for a minute. 
Okay, yeah. Okay, so I see some confused faces. We'll get into the architectures, but do you agree with the fact that there are four possible ways of doing it? Okay, fine. So if that is the case, let's let. Yes, the, the one that we did was feeding current into drain, observing at gate. We change, we observe, uh, we, we tweak the gate. I could have actually said, I, I'll feed current into drain, I'll tweak the source. One possible way of doing it, right? I would have said that I'll feed the, I, I will feed the current through, I will take current out from the source and tweak gate. I can do that. Or I can say that I can feed current into source and tweak source itself. Feed current into source itself. Or rather, take current out of it. Yeah. So, okay. So, I think let's get into the configuration that will that will make more sense then. So, so if I write it down, which means that I, uh, so what are the four cases? Feed into feed I not to drain and tweak gate. Feed I naught to source, tweak gate, feed I naught to drain, tweak source, and feed I naught to source, tweak source. Four different ways of, in principle, four different ways of uh, tweaking it. So let me choose the last one uh, for demonstration. Yes. Negative current, taking out, right? Okay. <laughs> Quick source. Let's see, let's see. We'll do that. Let's do that. Okay. So, when I say I would feed into or take out current from the source, what is the first thing that I should do? I should connect the current source to the source. Okay. So now uh, I connect the current source to the source. Let's again, again assume that this is one milliamp, right? And let's say this is VDD. It doesn't matter what is in drain because the current in saturation shouldn't depend on the drain voltage. Let's assume that that, uh, that is drain. Uh, what is the objective? The objective is to ensure that this current is also exactly equal to one milliamp. Okay. So now what is the argument? I will, I will observe source, right? That's what I'm saying here. I am feeding into source and I am tweaking source, which means I'm observing source also. So let's, let's observe the source voltage. So let's assume that this ID, again, you can assume there is a capacitor here for uh, sake of understanding. <coughs> so let's assume that your ID is, uh, Okay, so even before we are assuming, since we committed ourselves that we are going to tweak source, so we will not do, we are not going to do anything to the gate, right? So which means that gate has to be biased with some voltage. I cannot keep it floating, right? So let's bias it with some voltage, like whatever it might be. Let's say two volt, or not two volt. But let's. I mean, we all we know that if we keep it, uh, um, let's say this is three volt. So we'll see whether uh, what to do in auto correction in this case, right? So, so let's assume that uh, this is how it is by uh, this is I have set it up like this. So and if if ID is less than one milliamp, what's going to happen? Same argument. What will what is going to happen if ID is less than one milliamp? What will do, what is going to happen to the source voltage? If ID is less, then source voltage will increase. Right? Sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, you are right. 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 If ID is less, this voltage is going to decrease, right? So, so Vs will decrease. Correct. And the opposite will happen if ID is more than one milliamps. Now let's talk about the corrective action. So if ID is less than one milliamp, VS is decreasing. What should I do to the source to ensure that the transistor is becoming stronger? Exactly, right? 
So in order to keep my transistors, it's, uh, in order to make transistors stronger, I have to increase VGS, which means VG is constant, which means I have to decrease source. And that is exactly that is what is happening here. I don't have to do anything. Just stick it there, it will get auto balanced. Right? And this is also a kind of feedback, but the feedback is not evident because uh, we are treating the transistor as a four, three terminal device. But in, in, in principle, a two port network that we started off with, it's a four terminal two port, right? In the sense that you have, um, there's a one, one dash, two, two dash. Uh, this is gate, this is drain. And that's it. the one, one dash and two dash terminals are shorted, right? And when, when I'm putting this, I'm essentially doing this. I'm putting this one milliamp here. So the feedback is happening through this combined terminals. Okay, so it's okay. I mean, if, if this part is confusing, but uh, if you don't have to bother about it right now, when we go into more, uh, uh, more detailed feedback analysis, we'll come back to this. But uh, you should be able to appreciate that by simply connecting a current source at the source, right? The transistor gets auto balance. You don't have to do anything. Yes, Yeah, ID will increase. ID will increase and it will increase till it becomes exactly equal to one million. Okay. Okay. Thank you.